Hello everyone and welcome to Humble Beginnings Ministries. I'm your host, Pastor Stephen Woods, and today I want to take some time out to talk about the faithful tither who was disappointed with Mike Todd's church, Transformation Church. Before we go into this video, I just want to encourage you to like, subscribe, and share to this channel for the latest and greatest updates and the latest reactions. Let's go now into the video where Mike Todd's member begins to talk about her experience with the church. I'm going to tell you all my experience with Transformation Church, Pastor Mike Todd's church. In no way am I upset. I wasn't even upset around that time. But towards the end of this video, I also want to show you all how God came through for me because I got receipts. So I was struggling at one point and I mean, it was bad. I had just started a new job and stuff like that. And it is weird when you work for a resort, they make you wait a whole month before you even start. I don't know why they do that. So I was struggling to pay my rent and I was like, um, they always like Transformation Church always put out like if you're struggling or anything like that reach out to the church like they always pushed it out so I'm like wow they must be really helping people and um I know before I emailed them about my issue um they had just gave away a lot of money um I'm, I'm talking about they gave one ministry fifty thousand dollars they gave this person or this family ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars like I mean, giving out money, and so. That is in Seattle. Um, one Church Seattle, Come there's on. a check for a hundred thousand dollars. Like, I mean, giving out money, and so I was like, okay, like, all right, Lord, I'll reach out. So I reached, I reached out to them, and um, I told them, I gave them proof. I'm a very honest person, so I gave them proof, and. All that I needed was like, when did I start? May. So all I needed was like $1,556, right? And I was just like, you know, uh, told them my situation, gave them uh, my job offer letter, also gave them a letter from my boss stating what I do, how much I get paid, an hour, all of that. You know, just being very transparent and honest with them so they're not thinking like I'm trying to be a scammer or anything like that, right? And so I also gave to them a lot, like not just tithes and offerings, but like sacrificial seeds, only when I felt like but you won't even give him the money he gave you? Okay. <laughs> I want this church to begin to love the word giving. Not, not, oh God, what is it? Let me tell you. The devil will never tell you to give because he only can lie. So anything he says has to be the opposite of what God is and what God does. So if you ever feel inclined to give something, it's not the devil. You're going to give him you, but you won't even give him the money he gave you? Like sacrificial seeds, only when I felt led to. Okay, so um, the amount, like I said, that was the amount that I was asking. I gave way more than that amount, way more. And... Um, they emailed me back and I also gave them uh, a PDF of everything I owed and stuff like that and my landlord uh, name, number, apartment complex, building name, everything. They emailed me back a couple of days later and it was like, I'm not qualified to be helped. And so I'm like, not qualified to be helped? Like, I said, so what are the qualifications of being helped? And they was like, um, you have to be a partner or basically either a partner or you have to give them close to probably 10,000 or, you know, they have a number, a set number that you have to reach in order to be helped. And so I was like, but that's not what y'all say up here. That's not what y'all put out at all. Like y'all do not say that. Y'all make it seem like when somebody needs help, that okay you're going to help i'm not saying that you're obligated to do those things but it's kind of misleading but thank you anyway thank you for taking the time to read this 
um, if you did, if you fully, really did look at it, or I don't know if y'all just looked at the number of how much I tithe, gave an offering or sowed a seed, probably didn't even really look at what I sent you, but thank you. Um, thank you for even taking the time, really, to even read this, because I sent out a letter. I sent out the same thing I sent to them to like 20 other churches, and them 19 churches did not respond. They didn't respond at all at all and so i was like okay god well, i don't know what to do and at that time i was crying i was going through it so god came through for me let me show y'all he did he deposited uh he told me to, first of all to sign up for something okay so i did now i know you're like oh well that's how it helped but you don't understand people kept saying that it did not work they did not ever get helped and or it would take years or you just would not get any money from this program and family members kept telling me that it was like i didn't apply for years they, they never helped but when god told you to do something it's going to work because god says so they deposited three thousand two hundred and twenty one dollars and eighty cents that's just the first time the second time they deposited four thousand eight hundred and twenty three dollars and sixty cents on my residence ledger i had a lot of late rent fees a lot of late fees um and everything and god helped me with that now if i would have been prideful and been like no nah, i'm not doing that that's beneath me i would have never got blessed that's a word for somebody also he told me to sign up for something else they paid for all my um utilities all my electricity and i mean consistently and i told them like i now have a job and stuff like that i get paid this much this that and the third they kept paying it <sighs> last year um god told me to quit my job i cried because that was the most that i ever made but i trusted him and i'm like i don't understand why you would tell me to work at this job and now i have to quit i was upset but i quit anyway and so I told him, um, I had got like all the money that I got from working and that I was saving and stuff like that. When I quit my job, I took that money and I just paid up my rent for the next couple of months. So I did that in February. Okay, January. And I did that in January. I was always paying two months at a time for rent. Okay. But then he told me to quit in February. And so I just paid up the rest and I used um, my tax money as well to do that. This is what you get afterwards. Okay. Why did you do an example like this? Because I want you to know how easy it is to just honor God with the wealth he gave you the ability to get. You can't purchase a breath. You can't regulate your arms moving. You can't. Everything we have is a gift from God. And all he's asking is, when you get this little green stuff that people put value on, honor me by setting aside what I've asked to be set apart for me. This don't even look fair. But it's not fair because God don't play fair. He wants you to see that you can never outgive him. Can I say something to you that you maybe never thought of? Jesus was God's tithe. So let's talk about it. So here it is, this member of Mike Todd's church is in dire need. She only needed $1,556. And now all of a sudden she goes to the church for help and they tell her, well, you haven't met the giving quota. There's so much in this video and I really want to elaborate. Let's go into the video one more time and we will talk about it in each segment. I'm gonna tell you all my experience with Transformation Church. Pastor Mike Todd's church. In no way am I upset. I wasn't even upset around that time. But at, towards the end of this video, I also want to show y'all how God came through for me because I got receipts. 
So I was struggling at one point. And, I mean, it was bad. I had just started a new job and stuff like that. And it's weird. When you work for a resort, they make you wait a whole month before you even start. I don't know why they do that. So I was struggling to pay my rent. And I was like, um, they always, like Transformation Church, always put out, like, if you're struggling or anything like that, reach out to the church. Like, they always pushed it out. So I'm like, wow, they must be really helping people. And um, I know before I emailed them about my issue, um, they had just gave away a lot of money. Um, I'm, I'm talking about they gave one ministry $50,000 to get this person or this family $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. Like, I mean, giving out money. And so that is in Seattle. Um, one Church Seattle, Come there's on. a check for $100,000. Like, I mean, giving out money. And so I was. So let's talk about that. So Transformation Church has been giving in various means. Meanwhile, this young lady is going through a personal struggle. The thing about it is that we have to consider a few things. Okay. Some of you might say, well, was she a member or not? And honestly, that shouldn't matter. And here's why. We all are a part of the body of Christ collectively. That being said, when the Bible says if your brother or sister are hungry, right, you feed them. Don't pray over them and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, be full and walk away and do nothing. So she's watching this ministry give to so many causes, people who need money, tens, twenty, even $30,000. But then the church is writing checks to other ministries and, as the video showed, a check for $100,000. Here's the thing about this. We don't know for certain the depth, and she's going to talk about it, the depth of what exactly, how much they looked into this. But the fact of the matter is, just like she's saying, she went through a difficult time. She wasn't getting any type of income for a whole month. And then to be turned away because she didn't give anything close to 10 grand, all she needed was $1,556. Now you might say, well, what is she doing with her money? Why did she quit her last job? There's a lot of debate that can go into that, right? But let's listen in here. I was like, okay, like, all right, Lord, I'll reach out. So I reached, I reached out to them, and um, I told them, I gave them proof. I'm a very honest person, so I gave them proof. And all that I needed was like, when did I start? May. So all I needed was like $1,556, right? And I was just like, you know, uh, told them my situation, gave them um, my job offer letter, also gave them a letter from my boss stating what I do, how much I get paid an hour, all of that. You know, just being very transparent and honest with them so they don't know. So here's the, the thing about it. At least this young lady's 100% honest. She's giving them proof. She's so, showing exactly what she's making or about to make given all the right documentation but this raises a question right because for a church when someone comes to you with this kind of thing if you're giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars then what's fifteen hundred and fifty six dollars right because let's be honest about it Here's somebody who's trying their best, from what we can tell, to serve the Lord. And everybody falls on hard times. That being said, I think it's important for churches to have an emergency fund. And what I mean by that is, if there's emergencies that arise in the community, the neighborhood, it's always good to have a certain 
amount set aside to say, you know what, if somebody comes along and has a dire need, we want to come alongside them. Because, number one, you're showing the love of Christ, you're loving on others, right? We don't know how much money Transformation Church has in their bank account, none of our business, but that's besides the point. She's coming for help, and she doesn't get it from the church. The problem is, is that so many will look at this video and be like, that's why I don't give the church. Or they'll say all kinds of stuff. And the truth is this, is that every church needs to be good stewards over the finances they have. But also we must understand, not every church is in a place where they can help everyone in need. Let's just be real about it. Let's be honest. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt here not thinking like I'm trying to be a scammer or anything like that right and so I also gave to them a lot like not just tithes and offerings but like sacrificial seeds only when I felt lit but you won't even give him the money he gave you okay <laughs> I want this church to begin to love the word giving not not oh god what is it let me tell you the devil will never tell you to give because he only can lie. So anything he says has to be the opposite of what God is and what God does. So if you ever feel inclined to give something, it's not the devil. You gonna give him you, but you won't even give him the money he gave you? Like sacrificial seeds, only when I felt led to, okay? so. Okay, so there's the context here. Perhaps she's not a member of the church. She's someone who does support the ministry. She seems to be a faithful supporter as the Lord is leading her, which it helps us to understand it. It seems like she's disciplined with her money. She seems to make sacrifices and give. But again, when times are going good, you should build a emergencies fund yourself right and the reason being is so that when you fall in hard times you have a cushion that's important there oh um the amount like i said that was the amount that i was asking i gave way more than that amount way more and um they emailed me back and i also gave them a, a pdf of everything I owed and stuff like that, and my landlord uh, name, number, apartment complex, building name, everything. They emailed me back a couple of days later, and it was like, I'm not qualified to be helped. And so I'm like, not qualified to be helped? Like, I said, so what are the qualifications of being helped? And they was like, um, you have to be a partner, or basically either a partner, or you have to give them close to probably 10,000 or you know they have a number a set number that you have to reach in order to be helped and so I was like but that's not what y'all say up here that's not what y'all put out at all like y'all do not say that y'all make it seem like when somebody needs help that okay you're going to help I'm not saying that you're obligated to do those things but it's kind of misleading so she makes a point here right don't celebrate it or get it out there that you're going to help people in need and then all of a sudden you don't help them at all or you tell them well you didn't reach our set goal of being able to help you they should put that stipulation out there like if you don't give a, a set amount to this ministry we're not going to help you now does that mean that's biblical absolutely not i don't think anyone in the early church would have looked at it and said, well, if you only give $10,000, we'll help you. If you don't, sorry, you're on your own. These type of situations are sticky because here it is, yes, she has a, a sincere need. And it's gotta be kind of alarming that you're giving to people, churches, hundreds of thousands of dollars for whatever reason, right? And then somebody with an actual need, somebody who's a supporter of the ministry, and they can't even be helped. 
you know, I would love to have a an emergency fund with Humble Beginnings Ministries where we can help those who are struggling and going through. That would be a blessing. In fact, this video has inspired that. But the thing of the the whole fact of the matter is is that sometimes when you're helping people especially people who are transparent and real like this if they didn't want to give her the money physically they had the landlord's name and phone number they could have contacted him and said hey we want to help this young lady get caught up on her rent how can we do that can you help us to make that possible right let's be honest she's obviously a single young lady trying to make it in the world trying to do her best to serve God and to love God and to trust God but God is faithful in spite of what she just went through but thank you anyway thank you for taking the time to read this um, if you did if you fully really did look at it or I don't know if y'all just looked at the number of how much I tithe gave an offering or sowed a seed probably didn't even really look at what I sent you but thank you um, thank you for even taking the time really to even read this because I sent out a letter I sent out the same thing I sent to them to like 20 other churches and then 19 churches did not respond they didn't respond at all at all and so I was like okay God I don't know what to do and at that time I was crying I was going through it so now that's a tough spot right there that that's that's a dagger here's why if I'm getting a letter from someone and I'm a church and I can help them why does it matter if they've been blessing me right why why can't we just do things out of the love of Christ if someone's this transparent if I get a letter from somebody and they're laying it all out in lavender like that guess what if I can do it, I'm going to help them. You don't got to throw my name in, in lights, the church name in lights. We're going to do it in Jesus' name and bless you. God came through for me. Let me show you how he did. He deposited. Uh, he told me, to, first of all, to sign up for something. Okay, so I did. Now, I know you're like, oh, well, that's how it helped, but you don't understand so here's the flip side of the coin. This almost sounds kind of gimmicky. Not that God wouldn't do this or can't do it or that he doesn't work through programs. But why wouldn't you share the information with people who are viewing who might be in need themselves? What program was it? What did you do to get the assistance? Right? Did you go to a website? What did you do? so that others can have the same avenue. This young lady seems to act like everybody knows about these programs. This sounds like an advertisement. People kept saying that it did not work, they did not ever get helped, and or it would take years, or you just would not get any money from this program. And family members kept telling me that. It was like, I didn't apply for years, they, they never helped. But when God told you to do something, it's going to work. Okay, so the Lord led her elsewhere, but she also said in the video, the Lord told her to send Transformation Church to go there. Now, she just said, if God sends you somewhere, he's already got it. He's going to give it to you, right? He's going to do it. Transformation Church didn't do it. So that, does that mean they missed God? Or there's a little bit more to the story than what meets the eye. Because God says so. They deposited $3,221.80. That's just the first time. The second time, they deposited $4,823.60 on my residence ledger. I had a lot of late rent fees, a lot of late fees, um, and everything. And God helped me with that. Now, if I would have been prideful and been like, no, nah, I'm not doing it, that's beneath me, I would have never got blessed. That's a word for somebody. And how about the word for somebody of give some information to help those 
who may be in need just like you were. Why not? Give the information of what source you used to, be, to pass it along to be a blessing to others. Not everybody knows about this program. Also, he told me to sign up for something else. They paid for all my um, utilities, all my electricity, and I mean consistently. And I told them, like, I now have a job and stuff like that. I get paid this much, this, that, and the third. They kept paying it. Last year, um, God told me to quit my job. I cried because that was the most that I ever made. But I trusted him, and I'm like, I don't understand why you would tell me to work at this job, and now I have to quit. I was upset, but I quit anyway. And so I told him, um, I had got, like, all the money that I got from working and that I was saving and stuff like that. When I quit my job, I took that money, and I just paid up my rent for the next couple of months. So I did that in February. Okay. So let me ask you this. This is a touchy subject. God told you to quit your job. Now you're struggling. Now you're barely making it. Where is the... This sounds like Matthew chapter 4. Satan telling Jesus, jump off the temple mount. And God will spare you. He'll send his angels. So at least you dash your foot up against a stone. And she's going out there on the limb. She pays up her rent for a few months. And she's got a great job, great pay, more than she's ever made in her life. Did she get a double blessing? Did she get a better job? Is she making more money than she did at her last job? In January. I did that in January. I was always paying two months at a time for rent. Okay. But then he told me to quit in February. And so I just paid up the rest and I used um, my tax money as well to do that. This is what you get afterwards. Okay. Why did you do an example like this? Because I want you to know how easy it is to just honor God with the wealth he gave you the ability to get. You can't purchase a breath. You can't regulate your arms moving. You can't, everything we have is a gift from God. And all he's asking is when you get this little green stuff that people put value on, honor me by setting aside what I've asked to be set apart for me. You know what the thing about it is? And a lot of tithing churches do this. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver and to give out of joy and not out of compulsion. Do you not know you could be really hindering the blessings upon your ministry by demanding 10%? But hey, it's your loss. The Bible says each man should put aside as he is placed in his heart in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. But since you want to abide by the law, then that means you need to keep the whole law. And a lot of pastors who say, well, we're not under the law, we're under grace, but yet they want to hold to certain things that they feel benefit them. It's a matter of trusting God by faith, pastors. You're demanding that little 10%, but if you would allow the Lord to deal with his people, there might be a different outcome. We are called to live by faith and not by sight. However, I can imagine a mega ministry like Transformation Church costs a lot of money to run that operation in order for it to, to, to go smoothly, the fact of the matter is we need to get back to the scripture, go back to the word of God, and what God has to say regarding these things. Let's listen in. This don't even look fair. 
But it's not fair because God don't play fair. He wants you to see that you can never outgive him. Can I say something to you that you maybe never thought of? Jesus was God's tithe. That's, that's terrible. All analogies fail, and he just failed right there. Unfortunately, that is what you get when you get these prosperity preachers. They will tell you anything and everything. And it is sad. Very, very sad. I just want to encourage you today that if you're in a situation where you're in need and you're going through, again, I pray that the Lord would lead you, guide you, direct your path. And part of Humble Beginnings Ministries, we do want to be able to help people in need. With that being said, in this video, in the, in the description, there is a Cash App link, a Cash App rather address, and for all those that want to give to the ministry, you can. We want to start and establish an emergency fund so that when people have need, they can write into the ministry. We would like to be a blessing to all those that we can. It is a blessing to be able to be a blessing. The Bible says it is better to give than it is to receive. I am your host, Pastor Stephen Woods. I thank you for tuning in. I pray that you would like, subscribe, and share this channel with others, that they might be edified, Christ glorified, and the church built up. God bless you.